All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, episode 1000. Yes, indeed, this is episode 1000. Oh, yay! Woo! Applaud for me. That's a lot all of talking. All right, all right, all right. Episode 1000. So what are we going to do today? Well, we've got a special interview for you guys. Uh, I decided to do a state of the industry interview. I got a, a good friend of mine, a friend of 20 plus years, and he has been and he has been in the, the business for going on 40 years now. Talk about where we've been, where we are, and where we expect to be as a firearms industry in the future. Zach has some good news for you. We've got the a special announcement for you guys. And then, uh, oh, we, I almost forgot, Zach, where's the, uh, the news about the, the shooting, hunting, and outdoor trade show? It is uh, right here underneath the, the announcement. Oh, there you go. Yep. There you go. All right. We did not so uh, first things first, though, uh, DJ, put the needle on the record and play the music that everyone loves. Stand by for education, enlightenment, enjoyment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed he do. All right. So uh, Jared is off attending the wedding of one of our grad program members. He's actually with a bunch of our grad program members right now, but only, but two of them are marrying each other, and then the other ones are just watching. So uh, Jared will be back for the next, for Wednesday's episode. He'll be back for Wednesday's episode. Uh, but for today, you got uh, Zach and myself, and um, we're also going to interview my good friend Charlie Brown. Not that one, but the one who deals in guns and ammo. Yes, indeed. All right, Zach. You can go ahead and uh, set this up. What is new and what have you been working on? All right. So uh, what's new is we teased this last week. We were like, oh, we have a special announcement. It's all awesome stuff. And I was right. It is awesome. Because I am here to announce gladly and happily that we have updated. Uh, I'm a little quiet. We have updated the Pocket Lifesaver Kit line of products. Uh, 3.0 now. 3.0. Yeah, Actually, for the combat all, kit, this is 2.0, right? Uh, well, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we started. It, what's funny is we started out. If you guys remember, if you've been with us for a long time, and thank you for all of you. Some of you guys have been out there since episode one, and now we're all the way at 1,000. So congratulations to you, and thank you. Uh, we started out, basically, with a video telling you guys what should go in a trauma kit. And the response we got was, why don't you, Paul, put all that stuff into the bag and let me buy it from you? And I said, okay. <laughs> if you insist. That's right. So the very first kit had a TK4, a roll of gauze, a nose hose, a pair of gloves, right? It had gloves, gauze, nose hose, TK4, oh, and duct tape. That, the first kit had always that. Duct tape. Yeah, yeah, always the duct tape. And that's where it all started. And then we moved from there. We started, inter we uh, met, I met, Jeff. Was, that was actually right before I met Jeff Kirkham uh, at Rats Tourniquets. And we was like, all right, so bingo. bingo the Rats bingo. is hands down better. TK4 is better than looking for a belt. All right. Yeah. It's better than trying to find a rag and a stick. Way better. But the Rats is way better than the TK4. Yes. So uh, now we've got, we're all the way up to a pocket lifesaver uh, 3.0. Zach's been working on that. We have four different versions. Yeah. yeah. And we actually have a whole, we did a whole video about it. Yes. We did a whole video about it. Which you're gonna Do you want to talk about the, 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 the blowout kit carrier before or after? After. So, all right. real quick, we're going to go ahead and listen up. Hey folks, Paul Markle here with Student of the Gun, and today we're going to talk about the new and improved or the updated Pocket Lifesaver. Uh, what Zach has been doing in the background while you guys weren't paying attention, he's been updating the Pocket Lifesaver line of products. We've had these out for quite a while now. You asked for it, we gave it to you. So I'm going to open this one up and see what's inside or examine what's inside. All right. 
Right on the top, we put the nitrile non-latex gloves. These are extra larges, and we put them on top so that you can get them immediately as soon as you open it. So there you go, one pair of gloves. We have a three foot roll of duct tape. This is the flesh colored duct tape. And yes, duct tape is better than paper tape or athletic tape or medical tape on sweaty and bloody people. The US military, the US Army figured this out about 10 years ago, uh, maybe longer. So yeah, we got the tape in there for you. Now we've got a rat tourniquet, like it, don't like it, don't care. These work and they're compact and they're not that expensive. And these are the tourniquets that you're going to have on you uh, when you need them. So a rat's tourniquet. Uh, if you need to maintain an open airway on an unconscious patient, we have an NPA, nasal pharyngeal airway. If you either know how to use them or you don't, get training. There you go. Uh, we have the gauze, three, was it three, four, five? I think it might be five feet. Five feet of gauze, four inches by five feet long. Lots of gauze there to pack wounds, wrap wounds, and so on and so forth. We have the card, which shows you what's in it. Rat tourniquet, gauze a uh, roll of duct tape, and a KV sponge. You're like, what is a KV medical sponge? This is essentially a three by three gauze pad, a four by gauze pad that you use to either pack or wipe or clean wounds or whatever, whatever you want to use this for. And I'll open it up and show you guys there. So here you go. They look like, they look like these. You use them to wipe wounds or clean wounds, or if you have just a, a super light, wound that you need to just cover up and wrap. There you go. And uh, something that Zach has uh, provided you guys, it's a bonus. A lot of people say, well, yeah, you got that metal cook kit, but are you certified? Are you certified? Well, there we go. You're going to get a card that says, I am a galactically certified EMP. If you're like, what is an EMP? It's an emergency medical provider. There you go. So you'll get one of these cards and on the back has all the details on the back. The holder of this card is indeed a galactically certified EMP who is in possession of the tools necessary for the care uh, for to care for traumatic injuries that may occur in day-to-day -day life. This person is intelligent and knows how to make good decisions. And then you sign it and you swear to be intelligent and make good decisions. So there you go. So that is, this is the basic kit. Obviously, we have a smaller kit, which is a student kit, and we have the enhanced kit, and then we have the combat lifesaver kit, which is all the way at the top. This is the basic kit right here. You folks know that we expect you to be dangerous on demand and have the fundamental four all the time. So in honor of our launch or relaunch of the pocket lifesaver, we're going to be doing a fundamental four giveaway, which one lucky winner is going to get they're going to get this snazzy go everywhere shoulder bag. This is really a nice piece of kit here. So you've got a shoulder bag that you can put all of your stuff in, but you're not just going to get the shoulder bag. Uh, you're going to get a light. So what are the fundamental four? Lethal, sharp, bright, and medical, right? You're going to get a uh, 85 lumen pocket light that you can keep and take everywhere with you. You're going to get a knife. This is the sharp part. There you go, you got the sharp part. And you're going to get a basic pocket lifesaver kit. Now, obviously the one thing that we cannot send you from our store is the uh, is the firearm part. You're gonna to have to provide that yourself. But other than that, you're going to get the bag, you're gonna get the light, you're gonna get the medical kit, and you're gonna get the knife. And Zach is setting all that stuff up. All you guys have to do is pay attention and follow student of the gun. How easy is that? All right, guys, now you've got the info. Do with it what you will. And there it is. That's the awesome new kit. Or, I mean, it's not really new. The new awesome updated kit. Mm -hmm. That's the original Pocket Lifesaver. And Dad uh, hinted at it a little bit before we, uh, like, like two seconds before we covered that video. But we now have, boom. Another thing that people have been asking about is a convenient way to carry your Pocket Lifesaver when you can't put it in your pocket. So now... The nylon blowout kit. Boom. Nylon blowout kit. And For those this... who are listening and not watching. Yes. Well, <laughs> obviously. Uh, turn it around. Does it have molly straps? 
It does. It has Molly yes. strap. It has a quick, it has a dual zipper opening compartment. Yep. And uh, so that's going to be available as an add on. Yes. The PLS is. If you don't and, want it, great. If you do, great. And it will fit all of them from student all the way up to combat, will fit inside of this little baggie. Isn't that awesome? And uh, another thing, stop talking. Keep going. Another thing that we need to mention is uh, in the, I just, in the video, told you guys that we we're doing the Fundamental Four giveaway. Yes. In order to get signed up for that, you need to be signed up for the Student of the Gun newsletter, the electronic newsletter. And how do they sign up for that? They go to? studentofthegun.com and the sign up is right there on the homepage. It's like one of the first things you see is just boom, would you like to you get the seven training tips, right? Yep. And then you're signed up for our uh de lib one second. I'm bad at talking. Go We've established this. Com. Yes. Take a deep breath, Zachary. Go to studentofthegun.com. You open it up. It says, you want seven training tips that could save your life? And you say, yes, I do. You sign up for that. You get the free course, and you're automatically enrolled to win the Fundamental Four kit. Yes. We will be giving the kit away. We'll be choosing the winner from our active list on 10 November 2020. And why, uh, damn, you, you spotted it. I was going to say, and why is that day special? It's the Marine Corps birthday. Yes, it is. And it's the day we're giving away the the baggie. Uh, there you go. Yeah. The, the shoulder bag, the knife, the light, and the uh, the pocket lifesaver kit. All of that is going to be given away. And you also get the cards. You get the galactically certified EMP cards. I'm all that stuff. Zach's very proud of himself for doing that. So you get all that stuff and more. Uh, just for signing up, and it doesn't cost you anything. But but you do have to have an active, valid email. <laughs> yes. But and as with as with all, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead and tell them. I say as with all the giveaways that we do, you have 24 hours to respond, or we're gonna have or we're gonna have to move on because it's not fair if we like, hey, you won, and the email just sits dormant for the next eight years. Yeah. You know, we send you an email that says, "Congratulations, you're a winner." You have 24 hours from the time we sent that email to respond and say, "Ooh, ooh me, Mr. Cotter." And if you don't, then we're just going to move on to the next person. All right. Speaking of moving on, we're going to have to move on from this. Uh, the National Shooting Sports Foundation. A lot of people in the industry have been predicting this, uh, but Shot Show 2021 is officially canceled. Blah, 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 due to recent COVID, blah, 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 due to restrictions in Las Vegas and Nevada about blah, 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 we're canceling it. So here's the thing. Uh, it, it sucks because I like, I mean, I hate SHOT Show from one aspect because I hate the the bureaucratic greed, the taxation and the greed of Las Vegas. Uh, but I do like to see my friends, so yeah, it's just going to be. It's just the way it is. And, and here's the deal: if it, if it was going to be a situation where you had, they were trying to limit the number of people that could be on the floor at one time. Uh, they were going to limit everyone. Had everyone who entered the building had to wear a mask. Blah 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 blah. You you don't do a trade show like that. That's that's horse crap. Uh, and there was no way in he double hockey sticks that I was going to go put a mask on my face and and play that stupid little game homie don't play that so, so uh, i don't know sadly gladly uh, some people are you know a lot of people in the shooting sports industry are relieved they're like okay they don't have to do that and quite frankly the truth of the matter is uh, as we're going to talk about with charlie brown today and also uh, our friend jeff hoffman on tuesday there's they weren't planning on introducing a whole lot of new stuff so uh there's that all right. Jared's not here to thank the top contributors, but if you're in the public group and you're a top contributor, congratulations to you. Here's what I'm going to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we could not, we've been doing this show. This is our eighth year now. Uh, we've been, uh, we're, our anniversary is coming up in March, but we've been, been doing this for eight years. We've been at it. We're a thousand episodes and we could not have done that without the support of you turds out there. All you freaks and hippies who listen all the time. Thank you very much. And we could not produce a show if it wasn't for our partners in the industry. Duracoat Firearm Finishes. Because why? Because life is too short to have an ugly gun. 
That's right. That's right. Life's too short to have an ugly gun. Crossbreed holsters want you to be dangerous on demand. Actually carry your gun all the time. They make the, the highest quality, most comfortable inside of the waistband holster you're ever going to buy and wear. And if you go to their website, use the promo code SOTG18. You're going to save some money. You're going to get a quality holster. You're going to be a happy camper. And then you can be dangerous on demand. Brownells. Brownells is con- consistently and constantly trying to, uh, well, keep you guys up to date as to what's in stock. And I, I told you guys that when they get a shipment of ammo, they get the shipment, they unload it, they put it on the website, and then ding, tick, 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 it's gone. The only way that you're going to know is to sign up for their newsletter. You will get an, <laughs> you will get an email with your morning coffee that says, hey, ammo in stock. Do you want it or don't you? If you don't, great. If you do, you better get on it. But uh, sign up for Brownell's newsletter. Family-owned business. And, well, Duracoat's family-owned business. Crossbreed's family-owned business. Brownell's a family-owned business. We got uh, another uh, company to thank, uh, our friends at Night Fission. They're, ca- they're a family-owned business. The two head dudes at Night Fission are cousins, so they're family. And uh, they reached out to us a couple of years ago and said, hey, Paul, uh, if you were going to design sites for a Glock 17 or a 19, what would you do and why would you do it? And I said, all right, thanks for the challenge. And, and we did it. We very meticulously came up with a, a very specific site height, a rear site height, a front site height, and a design for a tritium site that is point of aim, point of impact from five yards to 50 feet using 124 grain jacketed hollow point bullet. So... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, check those guys out at Night Fission and pick up a set of accurate sights for your Glock or for your Smith or for your CZ. All right. And on Tuesday, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, we're going to do a special bonus episode. It's an extra. It's a lanyap episode. It's going to be episode 1000.5, and we're going to release that on Tuesday, Election Day, and I will interview my good friend Jeff Hoffman from Black Hills Ammunition, and we'll talk, we'll talk ammo and politics and the future of the nation and all that good stuff, and that's going to be tomorrow. So because we love you, we're going to give you a bonus extra Lanyap episode tomorrow. It's a public episode. All you have to do is tune in with your favorite player. All right, all you guys, you know what's about to happen. Pay attention, especially if you're a brand-new listener, because that's going to play the audio. Attention new listeners, we produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a special guest on the phone right now. His name is Charlie Brown, but he's not that one. He's the other one. He's the Charlie Brown gun guy. And uh, I've known Charlie. Charlie, let's go back. Let's go down memory lane. (laughs) It's been a long lane. (laughs) A couple of decades at least. I'm thinking Mm -hmm. the probably around the late 90s. I'm guessing is when we got yeah, introduced. Yeah, I would say that that probably would be about right. We've uh, we our our paths have crossed in in many many a spot, hadn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember running into you at, in in Las Vegas during shot, uh, and but not on the floor at Smith and Walensky's restaurant. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. Remember that? Yes. I, uh, I, I, I take I take my crew out one night for a big dinner. I think that was probably the night. Yeah, yeah. I was out there with my friend Chuck Buse, and we were enjoying steaks and and it it made me sad. I went back a few years ago. Well, it's been more. Jeez, Louise. I guess it was ten years ago. I went back, and it was closed down. They had closed it down. Uh, yeah, it was a great place to have dinner. That's it, for sure. It was. It was. So. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie owns a company called MKS Supply. And you say, I'm a gun guy. I don't, what what do they make? Uh, Charlie is the number one representative for inland manufacturing, for high point firearms, and for Barnall ammunition. And you've been in the gun game for 
Well, you tell me. How long has it been now? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I hate to say this, but uh, I'm proud to say it. I'm, I'm 59, and um, I've been in this business since I was born. My father and grandfather opened up the very first pay-to-shoot gun range in Ohio. No um, it's located in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, I grew up sweeping brass and and uh, sorting 38 rounds and putting them in little plastic containers, and you know that's how I cut my teeth. So uh, it was natural for me once I got out of school, and uh, I went to work for a distributor and and got a great opportunity with MKS, and and the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, and and you get to you get to work with your 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 youngin too. Which is that's it, right. My of, uh, my my daughter Kara yeah. is a VP here of the company. Um, that will be uh, the fourth generation of my family that is in the gun business. Awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. it's sometimes a blessing and a curse to work <laughs> with your family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my, my blessings are not here in the studio with me at this moment in time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, being being raised in a in a in a family business, I, I I've gotten pretty good at compartmentalizing the the business part and the family part. The family part, and and it is very difficult for yeah. for some people to do, and it's it's only for a, a chosen few, I guess. <laughs> well, it's there's definitely a learning curve. There's definitely a learning curve. There's that. Hey, uh, when we're working, working, we got to do work, and you know, yep. when we're not, we got to shut that off and and just be a family. So. That's right. That's right. Well, now that the audience feels like mm-hmm. like you're their their Uncle Charlie, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a little scary. <laughs> Still call me Uncle Joe, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, Uncle Charlie. So, Uncle Charlie, you've been in the business long enough to see lots of ups and downs. You were in the business during the uh, the Clinton gun ban. And, yes. and then things kind of went weird and leveled off. And, you know, then we had the Comrade Barry craziness. Uh, and then that leveled off. And now we're back to where we are again. So what what have you seen as far as trends? Is is what we're seeing right now truly, I guess the, the good word is unprecedented? It, it's absolutely unprecedented. And now, you know, to preface that, Paul, um, you know, the gun business is like a pendulum. It swings back and forth, and, and a lot of things affect that. Uh, politics is one. Um, world, uh, what's going on out in the world is another. Um, but it, it is, like you said, we've, we both lived through the, the crazy, wild, and slow years sometimes um, in the firearms business. But this has been truly, truly um, unprecedented. It's, uh, you know most of the prior panics were mostly politically motivated. Mm-hmm. Um, but this time we've seen some real civil unrest, um, leading to a whole new set of customers buying firearms for protection. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot more female, uh, customers and a lot more diverse, uh, what we, what you and I would call non-traditional gun people, right. which, uh, you know, if you're one of those and you're listening, please go out and get training and uh, become one of us, you know, Um, but overall, I think it's going to be a win-win for all the shooting sports, um, as we move on down the line and get away from this COVID and all this craziness that's going on. Um, it's going to be good for the ammo, accessories, ranges, gear, and, you know, we're going to have a lot more pro gun folks out there because, you know, half of the people that buy guns will decide they really enjoy it and they'll become long, long long-term shooters, you know, but this is definitely unprecedented. It's, it's, it's been it's been off the hook for holy moly, at least the last six to eight months. It's it's even uncharted territory compared to the Obama scares. Yes, it certainly is. Um, it, it really is. Uh, we, you know, uh, you've read it, and I've read it. You know, they estimate that we've had between eight and ten million new new firearms owners out there. Um, you know, and and we need to welcome them into our, into our, our ranks, you know, mm. but, um, it, it has been absolutely crazy. And, and, you know, a lot of it is just timing because, you know, a lot of it hit when the COVID started happening real bad and that created all kinds of problems with, for the manufacturers. Um, you know, people don't think of it. They think, Oh, the manufacturers just make, make products and it's right. easy. And the, you know, when the demand goes up, they just make more, but you know, um, 
business has been great. Don't take me wrong, but you know, um, because business has been so great and it's combined with the challenges that COVID had brought on, um, it, it has brought a lot of production challenges for manufacturers. For instance, here's a, here's a case in point. If I need to order barrel steel, minimum is six months out. Like if I go from making a thousand guns a week to 5,000 guns a week, I eat up all my barrel steel and I'm out of, I'm out, out of business for three months until I wait and get new barrel steel. Mm-hmm. Boot DuPont polymer, three months out, you know, um, springs and all the little parts that you use in a firearm. You know, a lot of those smaller shops were affected dramatically by COVID. You know, they had half their, half their, their workforce, you know, off. Um, you know, so that I, it's, it's definitely this whole, this whole COVID and, and the upswing has, has definitely made for some new challenges that we have never run in, into before, you know. And I'm glad that you brought that up because that's something I was going to ask you. You know, a lot of people sit out there and they think, oh, man, I wish I was in the gun business. I would be – I'd be making so much money. I'd be suing everything I could, you know. I was like, yeah, but it's <laughs> – there aren't people just sitting around, you know, yeah. you know in, a, yeah. in a business, you, you have to move inventory. You, you can't stay right. in a business if you have a warehouse full of stuff. You've got to move inventory, and you don't want to – I mean, heck, look – I mean, 2019, we had this conver- – we had a conversation almost a year ago in 2019 about how uh, – look at how many – how many distributors went – at least three? Three yeah. distributors went well, business out of business. Was, business was slow. Business was, you know, slow then, and – and a lot of distributors really struggled, and we had some very large distributors go out of business just because, you know, they just couldn't they just couldn't do it, you know. Yeah, they couldn't they couldn't sell yeah. enough product to make it. And so then you, you right. go from that to this this super low dry spell where people are deliberately not overstocking, they're not warehousing, right. they're not. You know, if, if in 2019 you'd have told people, hey, you need to warehouse a hundred thousand units, they're like, you're a lunatic. There's no way. Right. I can't I can't mortgage my, you know, my house or my business for that. Right. You know, I'll end up going bankrupt. And so then this yep. hits and boom and everyone's like, "Gimme, gimme, gimme." You know, yep. what's the problem? How come I can't have this? And I, I told and, and all the manufacturers, you know, yeah. all the manufacturers uh were doing the same thing. We were, you know, looking at the next 6 months saying, "Hey, you know, I'm going to need this to get through the next 6 months supply-wise." And then it goes from from, you know, 15 mile an hour to 150 mile an hour mm-hmm. and and we can't get barrel steel you know so it's uh it's a challenge that's for sure so yeah. you do you believe that 2020 has in in the firearms industry has put has caused people to pump the brakes on innovation uh, oh <laughs> absolutely paul <laughs> um every every manufacturer is sitting on new new innovative ideas right now um you know, we don't have any incentive to roll them out, really. Mm-hmm. Um, there may be a few getting rolled out just because they were planned way ahead, uh, probably planned to be rolled out this year. But, um, you know, every manufacturer that I know, including us, is setting on some new new products that will just wait until it starts slowing down again and roll them back out. And that'll, as you know, start the, the, the media machine happening and, get the consumers interested and, and hopefully rolling back into the gun shops. Yeah. And I've talked to, I mean, I've talked to local gun shop owners and there, and, and a lot of them, there, there's a lot of frustration out there because you know, people come walking in and they are behaving as if it was, you know, years before. And they're like, Hey man, I want a blank. And they're like, okay, well order me one and I'll pay you for it. And like, yeah, that's not, really how it's working now <laughs> yeah well but i want it and i have money i'm like congratulations <laughs> to you uh and I, first i got to find somebody that might possibly have one in stock what you mean i can't just no yeah you can't just buy whatever you want and yeah it's crazy like that it really is and you know case in point i you know we keep an eye on our distributors inventories a lot of times so i can look at and see what our distributors have and um, I'm not going to name the distributor, but it's a very large distributor in our, in our industry. And I was just cruising through the Glock line, and um, there was there was six over 600 SKUs, and I think 
every gun skew was at zero. Yeah. There was none in stock. There were some magazines and some, you know, this and that, but mm-hmm. uh, no firearms. Oh, it yeah. It was just, I don't know from the last time I saw that, you know. Oh, and people. Well, ammo's the same way, <laughs> you know. People keep, they say things, I, and this is, you know, and I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Someone will send us, uh, a student of the gun, they'll send us a message like, hey, I'm thinking about buying a blank brand gun. What do you think? Do you like those? Should I buy one? I was like, is it there in the store? Do you have the money? Yeah, yeah then buy that thing. Yeah. Hopefully you're still there and you got your hand your hand around it. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. like, yeah, if you walk uh, out of the it, store it, and come back tomorrow, it's not going to be there. Chances are it won't be. Uh, that's correct. And, yes, this is very unprecedented territory. You know, and, I mean, for, for High Point, you know, we, we, we make a very large volume of firearms every every month, every week. Um, you know, and and it, it's just uh, we, we increased production. We run into situations where we didn't have, you know, the right parts for the right guns. We've switched and made, made the other guns that we had parts for. But, you know, it's spilling out over into everything. You know, the ammo that we import from Russia, the Barnoll ammo, um, we just can't get enough right now. I mean, we're bringing many, many, many containers in every month. And, I mean, two and a half days after it hits, you know, my, my, my warehouse fills up. And two and a half days later, it's all gone. It's empty, and it's millions and millions of rounds every month. Yeah, it's uh, it's frightening. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that is the other. And I'm glad you brought up Barnell. Uh, the other thing mm-hmm. that that people ask me, they say, "Well, I'm thinking, I you know, I found a fill in the blank, whatever. I found a blank mm-hmm. gun for sale. Uh, is that a good deal? Should I get it?" And I was like, "Before you buy that, go shop." I said, "How much ammo f- do you have for that gun?" If you don't have any yeah. ammo for that gun now, brother, you know, I don't care if they're giving away Glock 19s for five bucks. Uh, if you can't yeah. f- if feed it, it's a paperweight. Uh, yep, yeah, very true. Uh, I, I saw one of the online retailers had the Ruger 5.7, uh, uh-huh. a, a, a barn burner deal. And I was like, hmm, let me investigate. And so I started trying to find 5.7 ammo. And it's like out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you could get that gun and you could show it to your friends, um, but if you can't find ammo to to uh, to feed it, it's like yep, it's just correct. a cool paper weight. So uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, on ammo, I mean, a lot of people don't think about this, but you know, let's look at the numbers. If people say we've, you know, the the Knicks and whoever else, you know, you look at. They say we've we've increased gun sales, or we've had new gun buyers of between eight and nine million. Let's take the low number. Let's look. Let's say we have five million new gun buyers. How many boxes of ammo do you think a new gun buyer buys? On average, it's four. So, in in ninety days, we had twenty million boxes of ammo disappear from our from our store shelves. Right. Manufacturers can't they can't react to that. No, you know? and they're not set up to. Because I mean, right? I, I I don't know about you, but I long for the days of the the Christmas spike, which levels off, which goes into the summer plinking, which goes into the hunting season spike, which levels off and then goes into Christmas. And you could you just kind of knew, you know, right? You knew when to buy ammo. You knew when certain things were going to go on sale. Because you, you you waited until October or September because you're like, well, it's going to be hunting season, so all this stuff is going to go on sale because that's what it does every year. And then Christmas deals, and then things would level off, and you know people just plink during the summer. But you could, yeah. you could, you know, as a manufacturer, uh, you could gauge that. Yeah, you it know? was. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's there's no gauging yeah. that anymore. I- I can't really believe my ears, Paul. You're such a wild man. I can't believe you're you're actually wanting something normal. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no, man, man. I, did, did I hear you right? This is episode. This is episode one thousand. Yeah, episode one thousand. Man, student of the gun. Yeah. I'm telling you, what a what a place to be. You know, <laughs> and we actually kind of we 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 tricked ourselves because we we started we were doing you know we had like episode. 
18 part one, part two, part three. Uh, and so we've got, we've got probably, if you talk to Zach, who's the, you know, my son, who's a producer, uh-huh. it's like 15 to 1600 actual dedicated segments, but there are like part one, part two, part two, part three, that kind of stuff. But this is finally, we finally reached one and, and Jared's like, that totally screws up our, our, our three numbers. Now we got to add four numbers or anything. I said, yeah, I know. But <laughs> well, I, I congratulate you on on a uh, on a awesome you know product that you're putting out on the market and and you know pretty damn good advice you know I mean you 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 shoot pretty straight and tell people what it's like and and um, you know you don't you don't fluff it up too much. Well, I had know, I had good, good mentors and I had good trainers. I I had good mm-hmm. guys. You had great trainers. Yeah. I did. You know? Now, I'm going to ask you one more question, and this is going to uh, yeah. require you to reach into your desk and pull out Charlie Brown's crystal ball. Oh. Every, everybody wants to know, what does the end, you know, just, just from your perspective, mm-hmm. what does the future look like? And, you know, everybody's like, and on November 5th, can I go out and buy 1,000 rounds of 9 millimeter for 100 bucks? Yeah, well, I don't think the ammo thing is going to be back to what normal might be until late next year. I really don't. And I think we're, we've seen a on ammo specifically, I think we're seeing the new normal in pricing because we have a lot of new customers that aren't, you know, that don't remember the, the seven ninety nine box of nine millimeter. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're getting used to paying 15 to 20 for it. You know, um, I think we're going to see a ammo available, but it's not going to be back to what pre crazy prices. I don't think what were. So, so I'm getting the crystal ball out. I got to move the wild turkey over and and, <laughs> and get get around it. But uh, the future, um, you know, after things shake out and we get back to some kind of normal, whatever that is, um, you know, I think the market and the business of firearms and ammunition will be good. Um, there should be lots of new products for the consumer introduced uh, by several manufacturers, like we talked about. But I do think politics are going to play a role in our immediate future. Um, if if we end up getting a, our socialist leaning team elected, um, you know we're going to have a fight on our hands for a little bit. But I I don't think like past administrations that we were so worried about. I don't really think any serious long term damage to the firearms industry will occur. Um, it's going to be a little some pain, and we're going to have some battles, but. Long term, I think the firearms industry is going to be just fine, and we're going to, you know, continue doing what we do because, you know, it's a, it's a, an American right. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think some of our importations may be affected by it, but um, you know, day in day out, I think we're uh, we're back to a normal that you were you were uh, talking about a, a little while ago. Well, one can only hope, brother. But I tell you what, and, yeah. and, and I'm sure you understand, you understand this where you are. The, a, a return to normal or normalcy or sanity or whatever is not going to happen by itself. You know, we, That's we right. we've got to participate. And I'm and my hope, you know, we've talked about all these eight nine million new gun owners. Is I hope that they're not just panic purchasers that are going to go right back to the way. Because let's let's face it, if if they were Clinton voters, if they were Obama voters, if they were Johnson voters or whatever, and mm-hmm. they all of a sudden got panicked into buying guns, they, at some point in time, we need to educate these people and say, "Look, brother, the whole reason that you're panicked and you had to do that was because you're not paying close enough attention to what the people in Washington are doing or the people in your state capital are doing." and it's not enough just to buy an object. You you hit the nail on the head earlier. You said, "Hey, if you're one of these new gun owners, you know, I I never was a gun person before, but now I am, and now I have. I'm a proud owner of X. Mm-hmm. You got to get some training, man. It's go out, get learn some stuff about it. Just yeah. like a, a driving a car or riding a bicycle or buying a new set of skis. I mean, you go out and you learn about it. Get some training from people that can help you out, and and you you enjoy it that much more. Um, you know, I think we will convert a lot of these people that, that may have been, uh, you know, like we'd like to say, not on our side or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm seeing it and hearing it every day that, that of non, our non-traditional gun people that are have bought a gun, you know, realize that these gun people aren't really that all that scary. You know, they're actually average people, you know. <laughs> so, uh, the, you know, that's where the brainwashing stops, you know, is when the, when when the when the buck hits the road so yeah so when yeah. when they hear the term gun nut it'll affect them 
and, <laughs> and right. you know they'd be like, "Hey, hold on a second. You know, a lot of these people used to be like, you know, they would watch a TV show or a movie or listen to one of these these pandering idiots at on uh, nighttime TV, and they'd say gun nut, and they're like, "Yeah, gun nut." And then they say, "Well, hang on, they might be talking about me." Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. and and you know that puts that puts the the the, the monkey on our back, uh, uh, our meaning the gun people out there that that you know actively go out and, and participate in the sport. You know, if if you know somebody that's a new gun owner, it's our responsibility to take them under our wing, take them to the range. You know, because an indoor an indoor range can be a really um, intimidating thing. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. you know, for a new person, you know, and so take them there and show them how it works, you know, take them around and, and show them how to, how to, you know, get checked in and how to get their stuff out and not to walk back and forth to their bag with their guns, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we, we need to do that as a, as a, as a community of firearms owners, we need to help these new people get up to speed, you know? So, uh, I challenge everybody to do that. That's what I, that's, that's what I'll do today. There you so, go. Yep. All right, Mr. Charlie Brown, the uh, owner of MKS Supply and the uh, distributor for. Uh, would you say you are the? You're not a distributor. You are the. Well, a we're, brand we're really the marketer. We the we marketer. we kind of become the marketing side of the manufacturers that we team up with, um, because manufacturers do things really good when they make product, mm-hmm. but a lot of manufacturers don't do things good when they try to market the product. Right. Exactly. Um, so, so that's kind of where we come in. We make sure that we send the right message and are talking to the right people like Paul Markle <laughs> and, you know, make sure the right story gets out about the product. And, you know, so we kind of become the entity of the manufacturer on the marketing side that allows the, the manufacturer to come out with all these cool new things. All right. Well, give my best to everyone in Ohio. I certainly will. And Paul. And- I it's been a pleasure you. talking with you. Thank you very much, Charlie. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Time. Thank you very much to Charlie Brown from MKS Supply for joining us today to talk about the state of the industry, where we've been, where we are, and what the future looks like. Uh, you guys, your marching orders. I, I hope uh, that many of you live in free America and actually will vote on election day. Uh, this. Uh, let me tell you something. You guys know I don't hold back. This mail-in voting and early voting is horse crap. It's garbage. It's bull crap. It's not what the Republic is all about. If you can't get your fat, lazy butt out of your bed, I mean, they keep the polls open for 12 hours from like 7A to 7P. If you can't drag your lazy butt to a polling station to vote, then I'm sorry, you don't get to participate. This this mail-in horse crap is crap. Uh, and I don't know why we need early voting. What's the point of early voting? So we can hack the election? Bull crap. Yeah. The, the excuse they give is so that there's smaller lines for COVID. Bull crap. I know it's bull crap, but that's the reason they give. Phalluses. Eat a bag of phalluses. A friend of mine said that he went and early voted and had to, and, had to wait two hours. Another guy uh, I talked to uh, said that he voted early and he had to wait for two hours. So you can eat a bag of phalluses with that crap. Uh, you, you are not going to convince me that all this voter nonsense is not designed to in, inhibit or to, uh, excuse me, uh, enable fraud. I say, do we do we even want to talk about like the amount of voter fraud that we've been seeing like as of a month ago? Oh yeah. Well, I just saw a, a story out of Maryland that people who voted early are now showing up to vote again. Or people, I'm sorry. People who mailed in ballots are going to physical polling places uh, because they're not requiring IDs. Yeah, and these run by Democrats. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, get your butt out on yeah. Tuesday and actually vote. We, we need everyone. Every patriotic American citizen needs to go because there is so much fraud and deceit that we're fighting against right now. Uh, yeah. Every single you, you are li- your vote is literally a vote against fraud and deception and yet they cry and wonder why we have the electoral college yeah exactly all right so uh don't forget tomorrow we're going to have a lanyap episode for you guys it's going to be myself interviewing my good friend jeff hoffman from black hills ammunition uh it's going to be just an extra one for you just because we love you and then of course we will be back with a wednesday episode as well 
All oh, right. Thank news. you very much for joining us for episode 1000. Yeah. Truly really appreciate it. And remember, you're a beginner once. Be your student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.